Still can't spell. Why not? Okay. <laughs> what? Come on. <laughs> All right. Come on. Actually, this is looking different. <laughs> that was interesting. This is looking better. <laughs> Maybe they're paying attention to what we're doing. I'm just going to load it in, uh, in Firefox and have a look. OK, this is interesting. <laughs> <coughs> the experience I'm getting in Firefox is very, very different from what I'm seeing here in Chrome. Um, this is not always surprising because Chrome is kind of ahead of everyone else for the most part. Um, but let's bring a, actually, I'm on full screen, so I'll need to check this around. Something tells me that, actually, show of hands, um, what's your pri primary browser that you develop in Chrome? Uh, Firefox, Safari, IE, Edge. <laughs> don't use any browsers and you don't know what we're doing here tonight. <laughs> I know from uh, my own work that most of the devs use Chrome. Um, and that's fine because you'll have your default browser, but making sure you test cross browsers is really important. I'm going to be really generous to Singtel now, and I'm just going to refresh and do nothing more. And the first thing I'm noticing at the top is my menu is not there. Oh, it's turned up at last. Ah, I've just worked out what they're doing. I've got a standard menu here, which is nice. Actually, there's some. Let's just do that quickly. Uh huh. If you read um, developer specs for how to do menus, you have to include a delay. Because if you see here, I'm flicking over, and the menu basically loads instantly, and I can get a really nice like disco style flicker going on. If I do this, it's going through a projector, so the refresh rate's not great. Um, if you're ever doing a menu, you need it. I think it's about a 200 millisecond delay um, on if it's a hover menu, so you don't trigger it in events like this. Um, this is a performance issue as well because I'm loading this into the DOM, um, which means I'm having to refresh the browser and like, cause, causing a repaint. And if I'm doing that every time I'm flicking through different menus, then it's going to be a problem. So if you work on menus, make sure you've got a delay. Otherwise, I'll find out and be angry. <laughs> I'm dropping my browser screen down here. And this is, I think I'm about 1,000 pixels wide here. And you'll notice that I'm into hamburger menu territory already. Like this, this is just ridiculous. Um, hamburger menus have been tested and debunked as any way of doing a menu. If you're using one, please replace it with a text menu. If you're doing a multinational site, there are translations out there. If you have a hamburger menu, the recognition rate is far less than 100%. So if you're happy for your menu not to be understood by most of your, or by a fair chunk of your users, go ahead. Because who needs navigation to get around the site? Um, but this is pretty crazy from Singtel. Um, let me just refresh this. Actually, we saw this before. It actually takes some time to load. And now look at this. I'm technically using a mobile as far as the Singtel developers are concerned, which is just bizarre. The weirdness of this more than anything is the performance. Um, and here's Firefox with their own hamburger menu, because why not? I ran this through web page test to see how it went. And A, first byte time. So this is when if someone requests the site, how long it takes for the server to refer, return the first byte. Um, so that's the first request, bounce to the server and back, how quickly that happens. You'd hope that's an A for any given server. If it's anything other than that, that means your server's got some problems and you probably should look into your host. Sometimes with some application or architectures, they can take some time to... Um, start up if they go to sleep between browser sessions, like if it's off-peak. Um, that can also affect your first byte time. 
but generally A, A is good. Keeper Lives are something that was in HTTPS 1.2. Anyone correcting me? No. Um, under the way that HTTP works, um, basically it's a conversation. I ask for something, introduce myself, um, please give me a glass of water. Here's your glass of water. Hi, I'm Chris, I'd like a glass of water. Server gives me a glass of water. Hi, I'm Chris, I'd like another glass of water, etc. It's really messy. Uh, with Keeper Lives, you can keep that channel open. This allows parallel downloads. So if you look at the way that browsers, we can see the waterfall later on, um, you can download more than one thing at once. So if you were doing web development in the 90s, uh, there was no such thing. Every single request was a separate thing. So you get the HTML, then you get some, one image, then you get another image, and then another, and another, and another. By having Keeper Lives enabled, you can do parallel downloads, which makes things a whole lot quicker. Um, Compression, they've got a B, which is good. That means they've turned on gzip for almost everything. I'm sure there's something they've missed out here. Then we get into F for compress images, which means they've not done any image compression whatsoever. Um, I find this can be difficult for developers and designers because trying to get the images compressed properly takes some work from both. If you are only a developer, if you don't have access to Photoshop, Illustrator, or Sketch, or something along those lines, there's only so much that you can do in terms of image compression. You really need an image editor on hand to actually do this properly. So if you are in that situation, you need to make sure that you educate your designers to understand how to optimize images properly. Because you can run an SVG through SVGGO, SVGO, SVGO. You can use, um, what's the ping one, ping quaints or something like that. But you can run them through every optimizer you like, but if it's not been optimized from um, the image editor to start with, there's only so much that you can actually do. Vice versa, if you're a designer, you can do a lot of work yourself, but you need to have that last mile done by the developers too. Um, unfortunately, that's really complex. You can Google it and find out what you know, the best way of doing things are, but it's still really complex because everyone needs to really be in sync with each other. If you are a designer who codes, then you can do it yourself and, you know, programmer who designs, that's great. But for everyone else, it's really difficult. Um, the space that we're in at the moment is that uh, there are some algorithms being developed, especially with some machine learning, and Google's made a bit of progress on this recently, where um, images can be compressed programmatically. So instead of having to manually tweak an image in Photoshop when you're exporting it, you can rely on algorithms to drop them down. And their current work is even with the best optimization techniques, they can cut images down by a further third. So in the long run, you won't have to think about this anymore and machines will take over that thing for us. Um, Google are doing this live at the moment. Um, hopefully that kind of thing will become very common, but you'll need an image server in essence. Instead of just pointing to a static image, you'll need something to dynamically compress it for you. It'll probably be just one extra thing in Webpack or um, what are the other image, the processing things? Um, gulp, grunt. It'll just be one more thing in your chain, basically. And then you won't have to think about uh, image compression anymore. So we're, we're almost there. It's complex now, but the future is bright. Um, so that will save Singtel in the future. Right now, they're sending quite a bit. We'll get into the details of that. Um, caching static content. This one gets missed often. Um, static content is anything that's not dynamically generated. That's images, JavaScript, CSS, anything along those lines that's not processed on the fly. You should be uh, making sure that it's cached from one request to another. This means if you do that properly, once you've hit the first page on the site and navigate to another one, then you won't have to reload all those resources again. If you do it badly like Singtel, every single time you navigate around the site, you have to grab it all again. And that's really taxing. It's taxing on your downloads because this site's really inefficiently built, but anyone's, it's always going to hurt that. Um, if you're on a mobile, it's going to kill your battery. Um, you have to process all of that again. It's bad news. This is a server setting, basically. If your server is set up right, you don't have to think about it. If your server is not set up right, go to Singtel. All 
Right, details. We've got a lot of stuff happening in parallel, but there are so many different resources here. This is crazy. It's got to be at least 10 years that we got told, told to bundle our JavaScript together and things like this is a production site. And this is madness. There are so many separate files here. You can see the parallelism coming into place. These things are being requested at the same time. But this is just insane. I mean, if you think with our food delivery, we've got four boxes here. This is the equivalent of handing over each slice of pizza separately, each piece of chicken separately, and somehow like, you know, putting on del separate delivery drivers orders all, and it's just horribly inefficient. Right, let's get a bit further on. Actually, what are we? Performance. So we have issues with caching. Web page test is free, by the way. If you've got anything that's in production, run it on your site and you'll learn. They tell you exactly what's wrong and how to fix it. Uh, even if you think you don't have performance problems, then you probably do have performance problems because you're not paying enough attention to it. Uh, this is a really fast way to learn. Um, they're not using a CDN. CDNs can be really useful for um, static content once again. If you're using cookies in any way, anything on the same domain uses cookies too. Cookies can add, uh, we've got small files potentially here. Cookies can be several K. And if you multiply, you know, how many files are we here? 234 files. So if I've got 5K of cookies, let's assume there are 33 things that are not static. Um, 200 times five is way more than you wanna have to think about. So it's basically a meg just on cookies that you could lose by going to a static CDN. CDN. They do have gzip compression turned on for some files, but certainly not all, and that's a problem. Content. Now this is where they get a bit interesting. Most sites these days are overladen with images. I talked before about how difficult it is to compress images. Uh, last month's Talk CSS, we had, um, what was the project you were doing with the Geek Path? Yeah. Um, Cheon showed us like, his best way of optimizing an SVG. Um, by running it through Illustrator using the ways I know, like the magic law, I dropped it by a third in size. So it's complex. Um, but at the same, and this is usually why images are the things that take up the most room. So when you see here in terms of byte size over on the right, um, images usually dominate in byte size. However, the number of requests are usually up there as well. So what we're seeing here is a massive amount of JavaScript coming through. There's also a massive amount of HTML here. I mean, let's go back to the site. This is, that's it. Like if we had a coding challenge here and let you go nuts trying to recreate this, you would not need nearly as many bytes as they're using. I might bump up the size of this actually so it's a bit easier to read. We have 86 JavaScript requests, which is amazing. Um, if you optimize everything correctly, you should be down to about three. So we're not even in the scale of where they should be. There are 76 images on a home page. I, I don't think a site should have 76 images, honestly. Um, regardless of what you do. Maybe if you're a photo gallery, then you'd have more than that. HTML is 24 separate files. What we're seeing here is some of the dirty work of the JavaScript frameworks that they're using because this is not actually optimized. Like they're not even deploying this in production mode. It's in debug mode in production. Um, yeah. So half the optimizations are not turned on because um, no one's actually found this out. I did tweet them a couple of weeks ago when I found this and they chose not to respond to me because they chose not to. 12 CSS files should be one, maybe two. 
Um, other is probably, uh, who knows what that could be. There are five fonts. Fonts are a really easy way to add weight to your site and slow things down. Um, ideally, you should be dealing with three separate font weights, and that's including families. Maybe four if you're really pushing it. Uh, because fonts take up space. So you're looking at about 50, 80k per font weight for a family. So every time you add one, you're adding that to the permanent load of the site, and there's nothing you can undo about that once you're loading the thing. So when a designer turns up and says, hey, let's add another font family, you say, hey, no, you're not, because we'd like the site to load. Uh, you need careful negotiation about it. Five is, are they kind of pushing it. I mean, compared to the other sins they're committing here, it's nothing. Um, but it's still something you need to pay attention to. There's no flash, which is the one redeeming feature of this site. <laughs> yeah. In terms of byte size. Yeah, if someone's still using flash. This is only just recently launched, this uh, like revision of the site anyway. Um, byte size is something else. So we've got more images than other files. I spoke about compression is difficult. That's not unusual. As it is, they've got 1.7 meg roughly of images for our home page, which is madness. We saw in the report that they're not compressing your images properly, so you could properly drop that down to 300k perhaps, depending on the images. Um, JavaScript is 1.2 meg compressed and almost 4 meg uncompressed. Um, Basically, this means the development team has started with one library and said, I could learn how to program that. Instead, I'm just going to Google and add another library onto it. And then another developer adds another library and another and another and eventually end up with four meg worth of JavaScript thrown to people. When you're developing, you won't see this, except you will actually because your CPU would be going nuts. Um, when you have to send that down, if I load this on my phone, um, fortunately here in Singapore, data is cheap. In other countries, it's not the case. I know Singtel is a Singaporean company, um, but this is costing them dearly just by having this, and it can cost customers dearly as well. If you're in another country trying to access Singtel on your mobile and you're downloading uh, 3 meg just to view their homepage, that's not great. There is a site that you can actually find out how much pay, uh, uh, websites cost to download according to different countries. Um, that's really useful to find out, especially if you're targeting someone other than Singapore. If you want to convince um, someone in your team that performance matters, um, find out how much it costs. Say, if you're deploying to Indonesia and you're deploying a site like this, you're going to be costing real money to your clients just by loading your homepage. If you need the, um, the drive from someone like the, to convince them that performance makes a difference, then a site like that can really um, turn them around, unless they're sadistic and don't care. There is 300 odd K of CSS, which is 2.4 meg uncompressed. Um, I, I don't even know where to start. Like, that's insane. Uh, this is probably libraryitis again, where they've just gone from one library onto another to another. No doubt a lot of these libraries are conflicting as they go. 107,000 bytes, 100K of HTML, and 180 uncompressed. Um, like if your entire site is 100K, you're doing all right. Having one page and your home page like this, hey, come back. This is scary. Then we're into the other. So let's dive deeper. What we're getting hit with, with SSL negotiations, if you don't have SSL turned on, then please do. Uh, it does add time to the load, but it makes your site remotely secure. They've got a CDN from AWS. They've got another CDN for Cloudflare, because they're probably using a library. Um, we're hitting double click so they can start loading ads. And this is within the first couple of seconds before the site's loaded. Um, the site takes 20 odd seconds in Firefox, at least even this is Chrome in Singapore that I did this test on, um, 20 seconds for the site to finish loading. Um, based on psychology, you've got, you, humans can perceive 70 milliseconds of something. If I flash like that, anything that's within a 70 millisecond break, you can actually perceive. Um, you'll really notice something that's longer than 200 milliseconds, less than that, 
takes the brain a little bit to catch up. In practical terms, if you're less than a second, you can keep the attention of someone while they're doing something. So if you're already on a site, you're going from one page to another, it needs to load in under a second. Ideally, the home page should load in under a second too. So when you go somewhere, you're still on track. If you take up to two seconds, you're starting to lose a person's focus. Anywhere up to five seconds, they're forgetting exactly what they're doing. Beyond that, the person's lost track of what they're actually doing. So they might be loading your site to pay their bill. Um, but by the time the site's actually finished loading, they've forgotten what they're meant to be doing because it's taken so long to load. Um, so this is another aspect of why it's absolutely critical that your performance is taken care of. Okay, more, see, more directories. So www.singtel.com, AWS CDN. Uh, we've got our support person, which is covering, uh, this is a couple of seconds, but the site's not even remotely rendered yet and they're loading the, um, the URLs for their live chat because that's more important than showing the site. Google Analytics, because they like to share all their data with Google. Ajax from Google is probably another library, uh, maybe jQuery. Another Singtel domain. Um, they're going to Facebook and sharing all your data with Facebook. More Google, more Sherry stuff. Site has actually started rendering at this point. Um, more Sherry stuff, ad servers, double click that 73 requests later on. Check out here, bandwidth utilization. I've said the site's really heavy. This is a desktop C, uh, PC. So this is not a mobile. This is um, basically struggling. Let's bump that up so you can see that a bit better. When the line is up here, that means the CPU is maxed out. And you think we're loading um, 7 meg or something, I think, total. So that's going to hit your bandwidth unless you're on fiber. And then you're still probably going to notice at least a little bit. Beyond that, the CPU is getting hammered. We're loading so many libraries and so many things at once. The, the blocker is not really the bandwidth anymore. Although if you look along, there's a drop between CPU and bandwidth both getting hammered at the same time. Now, if I'm loading this on a mobile phone, then um, I'm killing the battery as well because the phone's going to start getting warm just to load, uh, load the home page. The browser is also going absolutely nuts here because it's got so many different files loaded to it. Uh, one of the key things to performance is you want to render as soon as possible and not touch it after that. If you're using a single page framework like React or Angular or something like that, they use methods to speed this up. Uh, React uses Shadow DOM, which renders in parallel and but then injects at once. They're not using anything like this because they're absolutely hammering the browser. Um, you can see whether the page is actually interactive. So we're into six seconds here, starting to render, but there's nothing I can interact with because my CPU has gone crazy. I've got a brief window where I might be able to see a menu, but it's not really loaded yet, so I'm still blocked again. Um, and eventually, we're getting to like 17 seconds before you can even interact with the page. Now, you can lazy load to speed things up, so you start rendering and let people interact with them. They're doing the opposite of that. Don't you want to recontract now that you know how bad their site performance is? And this, as we get into the console, they've got errors in their console for a production site, which is scary. One of those is a 404. And this is really hard to see here. I can actually increase the font size. Um, they're using Raktiv to render. Raktiv has been developed by Guardian to render the Guardian, and it's a really nice framework. Um, they're using 0.73 in debug mode, which is not great. <laughs> um, and it's also sending complaints. What this tells me is no one has actually bothered testing this at some point. Uh, so they've just pushed it live and, and gotten on with it. I'm sure they're under immense pressure to make this happen, but um, as a customer, I'm not very impressed at least.
as a developer, I'm not very impressed either. If we look at our JavaScript sources, there is so much here. <laughs> Actually, we're getting to images here. More images. I've got a carousel. Actually, let me just expand that. There's a site, uh, should I use a carousel.com? Um, if anyone wants to use a carousel, send them there. Uh, they'll learn that you should not use a carousel. So this should be minified and merged together. There's no way you should be seeing this. This is basically someone's laundry being aired. Um, I think this is half of what's really going wrong here, apart from the uncompressed images everywhere. So with jQuery cookie, so we're using jQuery as well as other libraries that compete with it. I've seen before um, sites assembled in such a crazy way as this, where you get competing versions of jQuery on the same site. Um, jQuery alone to load is enough to max out your CPU, like just jQuery. Um, if you're loading jQuery plus every other library you can think of, then it's not going to get any better. They've got some lazy loading going on here, but the CPU is getting so badly hammered that it doesn't make a difference. By the time the site's actually responsive enough to lazy load, then uh, the client's already gone off to get a copy. We have polyfills, we've got all sorts of crazy stuff. <laughs> I could dive further into it, but I, I might kind of leave it around this point because we'll be here all night. The moral of the story out of this is don't deploy in debug mode. <laughs> Test. Um, realize that responsive design means that you don't make, um, you know, desktop browsers have to use hamburger menus because that's just ridiculous. Uh, this doesn't even look right. Oh, no. It's even got a scroll on it because <laughs> I don't have enough width to display it otherwise. At least I've got Shirley here. <laughs> Except Shirley doesn't want to... Hello. Hey, there we go. <laughs> this, I mean, if you're loading something like this, you should be lazy lo loading it. Only when you're actually interacting with it should you start loading libraries for it. Um, especially on a home page, you've got to make things as fast as possible or you will lose your clients. If you're selling something, every 100 milliseconds you make someone wait, you lose 1% of sales. Um, Singtel sell things, at least they try to. I've been told the StarHub site is also bad. Can you just go away now, Shirley? Thank you. And can't even dismiss this thing because I don't know what I'm doing. All right. So the question may be, if you work at this company, what can you do? One of the things you can do is go to web page test and run it and show someone an F and show them that it's not right. Um, you can also throw studies at them, um, throw them the Amazon study that, you know, speed cost sales uh, and there have been several studies into this that show performance will cost you money. If someone can't be swayed by losing you know, a certain percentage of sales then they can't be swayed and you probably need a new job. Um, but use evidence basically. Um, find the research papers, throw them web page tests, that way you'll hopefully be able to convince someone that you need to do something about it. Because if not for that, then you're going to be stuck in a job where you're presenting things like Singtel.com and maybe not feel, feel very highly about yourself. That said, if you know someone working for Singtel who works on this, I'd really love to hear about how they're going to fix it up. All right. Now, having done that, I will open the floor to CSS Doctor. Has anyone got any questions or anything that's plaguing them with CSS at the moment? I've got a question. Yeah, okay, sure. Is there a reason they're using this website as opposed to the browser tool for performance testing? Oh, like metrics? Uh, web page test lets you control the environment a lot better. 
um, I'm using a developer machine. Like this has got stacks of RAM, it's got all sorts of things going on. It's a really neutral test. You can't, I mean, your first port of call should be using your dev tools. Um, but if you want a really neutral way, you can control the bandwidth, you can get it to test on a mobile. Um, the cruelest test you can do is um, really. Nah. This is probably going to come up with a spam site now. So you want to find something that's close to you. There is Singapore. So I'm being really fair here. You've got Chrome, IE, or Firefox. You can choose exactly what you want to do. Um, the cruelest thing to do, um, where have we got... Actually, is it in advanced? I think it is. You can choose your bandwidth. You can set yourself down to 2G mobile. <laughs> you can run a number of tests, which is a reasonable way of doing it, because one test is not really enough to tell you if there's some intermittent fault. Um, I can't remember the location, but there's at least a couple where you can actually get it to render on a mobile device as well. They've got some old Android phones that you can test your site on. So if you really want to show someone, especially if you're targeting someone in Asia that's not Singapore, um, most of your clients are going to be running off cheap Android on bad networks. Um, and this is a really great way of showing them what's going on. In Chrome, you've got bandwidth throttling, so you can pretend that your bandwidth is not great, but you can't um, make your CPU drop down. Well, you probably could, but it's a lot more effort. Whereas this is a nice, neutral way of doing it. You need to be in production. It needs to be reached publicly for it to work. So it's a bit late if you're a developer of the site looking at it in some ways. But at the same time, it, they explain everything that's there and it's easy enough to work it out. Anyone else? See, uh, there's some like images. The I'm the size of uncompressed seems to be even smaller than like the values of compress. Yes, uh, they're probably turning compression on incorrectly on images. Uh, if you compress a JPEG, you make it bigger if you use a zip on it, because the JPEG is already compressed. But there's a, it's not just image. You can see like, for instance, the font in others. Uh, fonts, yeah, fonts the same. You shouldn't compress fonts because they're already compressed. Other, I don't know exactly what that is. We could dive into it and find out, but who knows? Um, yeah, you've got to be careful when it's a server setting. You do it once, set it for the MIME type. You don't have to think about it again. We've seen that whoever's configured the servers for Singtel doesn't seem to know what they're doing very well because um, they've made a lot of really basic mistakes in their config. So the fact that they've turned on Compression for things they shouldn't have is no surprise. Any other questions, comments? CSS oddities? All right. Who if they have this site as a responsive site, right? I mean, it is responsive. Yeah. Probably on a mobile device, it wouldn't load all the assets that are hidden behind a media query. Given that the media queries won't stop assets from loading, um, given that they're running debug mode, I wouldn't hope that they would. But when I mean, we can, yeah, actually, that's one reason why you can set the in web page test. You can set the, um, the browser string. Um, it's going to take me too long to get into that now to look into it. Yes, in theory, you could reduce the assets that you load on mobile, but given what a dog's breakfast this is, I doubt they are. Alrighty. Where are we at? Color of the month with that contrast. Announcements. Has anyone got any announcements they'd like to make? If you